everyone, Moses here, and I have with me something very, very special. That is the ESP Mikio Fujioka Snapper 7 Signature Guitar. <laughs> Right, Twinkle Pink. These snappers are, in my opinion, ESP's best guitars. I mean, I haven't tried the Exhibition series models, and they're supposed to be like just a bit above Custom Shop, but I believe that's just more uh, of ESP showcasing and displaying what they can do artistically and try to go all out with their designs and creativity. But as far as like models, whether it's from any like signature artist or any guitar really this stroke this goes in like uh like the arrows the horizons and so forth i think the snappers are honestly esp's best guitars again this is from me owning several snappers several e2s other like one-off esp models and just overall my experience again this is just my opinion but a lot of people when they try out these guitars, they'll tell you they are one of the most resonant guitars I've ever picked up. Uh, very smooth, very easy to play. Even for seven strings, I've had a lot of other players, when they try out my guitars, they say like they don't really take a long time to adjust to uh, these Snapper 7s because of just how well they play and they're just so incredi incredibly well built but I'll get more into that later on towards the end of the video but I'm just gonna talk about the specs now so I don't know how well the camera can pick up but we have a really nice burgundy mist finish on the front and in the back depending on the lighting it might pick up as like a very like light or tan or probably pink on some shades of light and whatnot but it is very classy Especially with the white pick guard and the cream knobs and the pickup selector switch. Everything really, really fits nicely about this guitar. It may look like a classy strap, but you know, this thing does way more than that. And it's clearly built for metal, even though it might not look like it. It's truly a fire breather. Don't let the looks of these snapper guitars turn you off, whether they can pull off something along the lines of metal. Along with that, I mean, it could do a, a lot more than just metal. Continuing on with the specs, we have two EMG 707s. So compared to the 81s that are on my Pink Chan, these are a little more open and natural sounding, not as compressed. They're still hot and very, um, what's the word to describe? I mean, they're obviously active pickups and they are built for, you know, the high gain type of stuff. They're still high in output, but I feel like you got more um, tonal variety with these pickups. They're not super, super crazy hot. And I feel it fits perfectly well for Mikio's style, which is like obviously a combination of like jazz fusion with the solo stuff and then going out like balls crazy with the baby metal stuff, right? And yeah, these pickups are great. Along with that, you can split them with this little switch over here. What this does is it pretty much turns them into single coils. So you have a three-way toggle, which you have the bridge engaged, and then in the middle, both on the third selector, you have the neck pickup. But with this, you split this, this is just one coil. Then you have, I believe, if I recall correctly, it might be the outer one, or maybe both of these single coil, single coils, and then you have the, just a single on the neck. I like this switch a lot because you get a lot of twangy, a lot of strat shapes and it's crazy because people give EMG a bad time about you know just being a one trick pony but with this switch you can really cover a whole lot of ground with this guitar we have a master volume master tone pretty state uh, straightforward nothing crazy or special in my opinion something like this is more than enough 
I personally wouldn't use the tone knob. Some others do, some others don't, but pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of knobs, which is good. And if I turn the back now, we just have the cavity without the plate, which personally I like this a lot more since you don't have to take off the screws and whatnot to adjust the claw. It's kind of right there, easy to access. And then we have this cool like little ashtray style ESP battery compartment that they've done before in all their models. What's really cool about these snappers, especially the high-end ones, is that they have a titanium ESP custom lab neck, no, a neck plate. There you go. A lot of people will argue, well, you know, it's just a regular neck plate. It's not going to do much uh, tonally, but I believe this titanium material adds a lot more snappiness and attack. You know, normally, you already get that from a bolt-on neck, but with this, it just creates a little bit more. And it sounds great. I could kind of tell. I have other bolt-on necks, but with something about this neck plate gives it just a little bit more snappiness. Uh, hence the name, right? Of course, we have an original Floyd Rose. If you know how to set these up, you're not going to have any issues with tuning. They're pretty, pretty reliable. Going on with the Rosewood fretboard, very nice. What I like about these, if you look really close, you can see grains. They're not cracks. They're just these really, really nice grains that make the fretboard look very nice and give it more of a classier aesthetic with this whole guitar. This thing just screams classiness, but, you know, it's definitely a fire breather. And then you have the really easy to access truss rod wheel right there at the bottom. Every guitar company should be doing this. No more need to having it up here. Locking nut, the awesome ESP logo, along with the printed Mikio Fujioka signature. If I turn the back, Locking tuners, go to locking tuners. As far as the neck, it's a 12 inch radius. It's a satin feel, but man, there's something about these snapper necks, what they do over there at the custom shop. They're very, very unique. They don't feel very uh, typical of what a sand, uh, like a sanded down or satin mat type of finished neck, right? These have a character of their own. Like this, it's a, this is obviously a snapper guitar, but the Takayoshi one that I have back here, that's also, um, it also features a same neck profile with the same type of feel spec wise, that's what it says on the sheet, but they feel different. That's actually a little bit wider. This is just a little bit thinner, but it still has a bit of chunk in it. Even though they're both satin, they feel a little different. Even with the red one that I have, I think it feels more similar to the red one than the pink one that I have back here. But even then, they just, they're pretty unique. They feel very, very nice. And going back to what I said, they have a character of their own. You have these nice pearl inlays. Then you have the super easy to access upper register cutaway right here. Very nice. No hindrance at all when playing up here. Very important. Some bolt-on necks have an issue where it's really hard to play up in the higher frets. But with this nice little contour and back here makes it really easy. You have a glow-in-the-dark side dot inlays. Just like the pink one and the red snapper that I have. The frets are, of course, extra jumbo, 24, Jeskar nickel strings. And, you know, for this price range, I still believe they should be stainless steel, especially for a custom shop guitar, a signature artist guitar. But I think I'm kind of done, like, arguing that, I mean, Jeskar is a really high quality type of fret, or I think Jeskar is the brand of the fret. But, um, yeah, impeccable uh, craftsmanship with this guitar. Nothing but good things, good things about this guitar. Okay, now I'm going to be talking about my overall opinions, my impressions, what I think about this guitar. First, this guitar, and then I'll talk about what I think about the snappers in general. This guitar, it's perfect. I would honestly prefer this a bit more than the pink one because you have 24 frets. 
Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about my overall impressions about this guitar. As you can already assume, nothing but good things. It's incredible. One of the best guitars I've ever played. One of the best built guitars that I've ever played. You could tell the craftsmanship on this guitar that they went over the Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about my overall impressions and opinions about this guitar. As you can already assume, nothing but good things. One of the best guitars I've ever played. One of the best well-built guitars that I've ever had to hold, see, and play, and own. I'm very fortunate to own something like this. It's kind of surreal. It's like, it's, this is one of those guitars where I've been looking at for a while and just never pulled the trigger. But I found it at a good price, so I had to. The Snappers are, in my opinion, ESP's best guitars. They are super resonant sounding. And a lot of people would agree that even though these are seven strings, it doesn't take any time to really get adjusted to this because the neck profile and how they build these guitars is really familiar. Like your hand will get used to and adapt pretty fast. It's not something where it's going to take you a while. It just feels really good. It's not a really wide neck or super flat. This is a really, really good medium between all that. Very fast neck. It's a screamer. It sounds fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about my overall impressions and my opinion about this guitar. As you can already assume, nothing but good things. This is one of the most well-built, one of the best guitars I've ever played. The ESP Snapper series guitars, not just the signature models from the artists, but even just their base models that um, are along with the red one that I have are one of the best. I would even go as far as saying they are probably ESP's best guitars. They're just super resonant sounding. They're very unique. And just by holding and playing and feeling these necks, you could just straight up tell like, yep, this is way different from like an E2 or anything like that. This has a vibe of its own. It's in its own league. I know they're primarily a Japanese market guitar, but I have came across some news that now they're available in the U.S., which I'll do a video about that separately. So that's pretty exciting. I no longer really have to go to a Japanese website to get a snapper. These I probably still have to, but going back to those other snappers, I highly recommend if you can pick one at a good price or if you see it anywhere, try it out because they are ESP's finest guitars. And, you know, it's a tragedy that Mikio passed away pretty soon. And having this guitar with me and holding what he would be using on stage, clinics, record with is pretty surreal along with the pink one that I have back here. It's awesome. Nothing but good things. I play this one a lot and I regret nothing, especially for the price I paid for. But that's about it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I have a different little setup and... So far, I like it. Thank you for uh, sticking around. Let me know if you have any questions. I will probably end up making a different video comparing all these other snappers because they're a little bit different. And yeah, you guys have a good weekend.